Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and in this episode of The Automation Show, we're going to take a look at the S7-1200 Expansion I.O. modules, which are known as Signal Modules. And uh, the good folks over at uh, Siemens sent me in a larger S7-1200 with uh, several modules, and we'll just take a look at them quickly here. The ones I have set up today are a Digital Input Expansion Module, a Digital Output Expansion Module, and then an analog in and out expansion module. And you can see right there, the first one's an SM1221. The next one is an SM1222. And the last one is an SM1234. Now, what I've done is I've wired a bunch of stuff I had lying around the office here to these. And uh, let me just zoom out some and uh, show you what we got here. So I'll put this guy down, move some of this other stuff in. So what I've done is I've started with the IFM temperature sensors that we used in the last episode because I already had them out and they uh, output both discrete and analog, right? So that gives me my inputs to the system. So I'll have some discrete inputs here. You can see right in there, I got two discrete inputs coming in, one from each temperature sensor. Okay. And then I have my analog in right here. So here's my two analogs from those two sensors. Now I've wired one as current and one as voltage, and that's why you see I'm, I'm actually skipping input number one. So I'm using input number zero and number two, because uh, as we'll see, input zero and one have to be the same type, so current or voltage. So um, those are my inputs. Now for my outputs, digital outputs, I just wired in a couple of uh, leftover LED pilot lights from one of my courses, as well as the meters I use uh, when I'm teaching analog, you know, the, getting started with analog modules. So I have, uh, you know, 0 to 10 and 4 to 20 uh, meters right here. So we'll be using these two right here. So those are wired, you can see right here on the analog output. You can see I have the first one, output number 0, wired as current. And the second one is wired as voltage. The wiring here looks identical, right? But these um, these meters are actually different inside. So with that said, that's the whole setup here. Again, I'm powering everything with the side top power supply, which is great because it has, uh, you know, overcurrent protection, short circuit protection, and all of that. So um, before we turn this all on, let's see if we can't convert our program from our last uh, S7-1200 uh, project and uh, see if we can convert it to this new controller and add these I.O. modules and configure them correctly so this all works. So with that set up, before we go over the computer, though, I do want to thank all our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And now we can go over to the computer. So uh, here we are. This is the program. I actually just renamed it. Here, let me hide VMware. I actually renamed it to project 03 underscore V16. The last one we did was 02. And uh, the first thing I want to do, I'm going to go to devices and networks. I'm going to double click on the device here. And I need to change this because this is a 1214. And that's not what I have here. As a matter of fact, let's zoom in on the controller. If you remember, last time we did this, we had a 1212C. So I'm going to go ahead and change this controller, change device. Okay, and we want a 1214. Okay, there it is. Now notice it's choosing version 4.4 firmware. This is going to cause us a problem because that's uh, not 4.4 firmware. So in any case, we will uh, we will see what happens when it does, uh, when we try to download it, what happens and the errors we get. So let me go ahead and click on OK. Okay, it's saying, hey, I'm going to close your OB1. Okay, here we are. Now look, all the extra signal modules I can add to this unit because it's a bigger unit, so it has more expansion capability. So now the first thing I want to do is let me add the uh, digital input. This is an eight-point input. And let me make this bigger here. And let's make this bigger too. Okay, so let's go ahead and drop this in here. Okay, you can see the 1221 right there. Okay, next we have a digital output. It's an eight point. Drop this guy right over here. Okay, you can see it's a 1222. And last but not least, I have an analog in out. So let's go look for the analog in and out, and I'll drop this one in here. You see, 1234. Okay, so far so good. Now, 
The next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to set up the analog. So channel zero, I'm going to have set for current. Okay. Now channel one, you'll notice I can't change it. That's what I was telling you earlier. I had to wire the voltage to channel two so that I could uh, choose it differently because whatever I set this to is what the next channel will be set to. And again, you can see plus and minus 10 volts. There is no zero to 10 volt selection here. Okay. So with that done, let's look at the outputs. I want the first one to be current and the second one to be voltage. Okay. So now that I've set up my analog, it's not really anything set up to do with the digital. Well, except I could create some tags. Let's go ahead and create some uh, IO tags here. So we're going to be using the first two inputs. So I'm going to call this DI underscore, and this is slot two. So I'm going to call it 20. Whoops, 20. Now this is my own, my own nomenclature. These are my own tags. I'll call the next one 21. You can name your tags, whatever you want. Typically your company will have a standard that you're going to go by or, you know, um, a format that you're going to use, you know? So in any case, let's do the outputs now. So I'll do do underscore and this is slot three. So I'm just going to go to three zero. This is what works for me. Do whoops, do 31. Okay. Now let's go to the analog. So IO tags, analog in. So I'm going to call this AI underscore. Let's see here. It's slot four, so I'll call it four. Whoops, four zero. And I'll call this one. I'm not using it, but I'm just going to go in order here for one. And then this is the other one I'll be using AI underscore four two. That should be good enough for our quick little uh, program. All right. Well, speaking of program, let's open up uh, OB1. I mean program here and let me uh, make this smaller and uh, you know what I want to do is when one of my inputs comes on I want to turn the corresponding output on so in other words if sensor one is out of range I want to turn on light one and if sensor zero is out of range I want to turn on light zero okay so I just happen to have red and green but we'll just uh, we'll just uh, use those as um, indicators that the corresponding sensor is on so let me come in here and we'll drop this right here. And now let's go grab one of these uh, outputs here and put it right there. And I will do the same thing again. Contact and coil. Excellent. So this input will be our digital in 20 and we'll go to digital out 30. And this one will be digital in 21. And we'll go with digital output 31. And again, as you know, I'm new to Siemens. So if there's any experts out there who have some tips and tricks, please share them with us. We would love to know about them. The next thing I want to do is I want to take the analog, right? I want to take those analog values coming in and throw them to the output so I can see them on the meters. So let's go ahead. And I think in this case, I'm going to use a move. Okay. This is what I would do in other controllers. So I'm just going to do it here, right? I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but it's definitely seems to work. So I'll take an analog input zero. Now, wait a minute. That's not what I want. I want, you know, that's from the old program. I want analog input 40 and I'm going to put that out to analog output. Where's my analog output? Hmm. Did I forget to do that? Let's go back there. Okay. Uh oh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, I did. Look at that. So AO will do 40 and AO 41. Okay. So let's go back to our code and we're going to say AI 40 goes to AO 40. Okay. We'll put another move over here and we'll take AI 42. Remember we're skipping 41 because it has to be the same as 40. And I wanted to try both current and voltage. And we're going to take this out to AO 41. Okay. So everything's looking good, right? Well, I don't think we're going to be able to download it because I think there's a problem with the firmware. It doesn't match. This I think is newer firmware. 
what I did, the 4.4, and that doesn't have that firmware in there. So, well, let's try it. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to select the processor. I'm going to click on download. Of course, I will have to turn power on. So let me do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, everything's plugged in and powering up. So in a moment, we should be good to go. Excellent. All right. So now let's start a search. Okay, there it is. It found it. My 1214C. Now, originally it had 192.168.0.10 as the address. Uh, in the pre-show, I actually downloaded and tested to make sure everything worked. So now it has the same address as my other S7-1200 has. Of course, because I just converted the same program. So let's go ahead and load it in. Okay, look at it. Failed. Failed. What happened? Not a compatible firmware rev. Wow. So we were right. You can see the error here as well. So how are we going to fix this? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go back into the controller, change the de change device. And I'm going to make it firmware. Let's make it the oldest one possible. Okay, so we want to change it to a, well, let's make it 4.0. Okay, we're going to see all what will happen if I do that conversion, but that's okay. Okay, it's going to close and reopen the OB1. That's fine. Okay, now let's try to download it. Okay, we'll load it. And finish. Okay. And let's pull up our PLC tags. We'll monitor those. Okay, great. Now we can see here on the analog inputs, 10,000 and 6,000 roughly, right? And the analog outputs, 10,000, 6,000 because I'm just copying that here. Let's pick, pull open the uh, OB1. We'll take a look at that. And let's monitor this guy. You can see I'm taking whatever comes in. I'm putting it right back out. So let's go back to our tags here. And we can also see, if we look through here, both of these are on. The DL20 and 21 are both on because I'm below my range. So I should be able to do two things here. Let's go back to OB1, and we'll scroll up here. Okay, you can see both my lights are on. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, you can see I really get the temperature down in here this morning. Okay, now you can see they're going. They were like at 64. So now they're climbing, climbing, climbing. Oops, this one went to 80. That one's still at 78. So you can see I got one output. And um, if I bring the other one over 80, I get the other output. Oh, this one already dropped down below 80. Okay, so I'll warm them up both quite a bit over 80. And I got both my outputs. We can come back here and we can see the code here. See that's working. Now, one of the other things too is we can watch, we'll actually see our outputs are changing on the meters. Our output's changing because these values are changing. So let me, let me go ahead and do this. What I'll do is I'm going to, uh, turn the air conditioning on, try to cool these sensors off really quick, and then we'll come back and you'll see that these meters have changed dramatically. As a matter of fact, before I do that, let me go ahead and zoom in on them. And we'll watch them, uh, them change as, the, uh, as they cool down, these bottom two. Okay, I actually put the temperature sensors right in the grill of the air conditioner and they're down in like 47 and 49 are their temperatures. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to stop the air conditioner because it's kind of loud. I'm going to go grab the uh, units here. Keep your eye on the meters because I'm going to grab them and you should see the meters go up because I am holding on to them using my body heat to raise their values. 
and I should get them all the way through. Yeah, let's see if I can get them under the camera here. Get them all the way through the 65 to 80 range and all the way up into the 80 plus range when their outputs will come on. Yep, you see that? And you can see the meter's changing too because we're taking that analog in. One of these is current, one is voltage, and we're putting it to the analog outputs. Okay, and we uh, can see that on the screen as well in our code. So with that, that's how easy it is to use signal modules with the S7-1200. You just add them into your project, um, download, you know, configure your analog, of course, just download and go. So it's really very simple to do. And um, yeah, that's it. So I want to say a huge thank you to Siemens for saying I'm in. Can't wait to do more with them. Uh, we even have more modules to look at, but uh, if you're looking at expanding your S7-1200 with some additional signal modules, yeah, it can't get much easier than that, right? So with that, I just want to thank you for watching, for subscribing. Please give us a like if you enjoyed the show. also want to thank all of our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash automation. Um, you guys really uh, help us and keep us going. And I also always love to throw out that uh, if you know anybody looking for automation training, check out my website, theautomationschool.com, and uh, let them know that I sent you here from The Automation Show. And with that, I want to wish you all a very safe, healthy, and happy week. And until next time, my friends. Peace.